if you take the basic principle that people keep what they value, we as a nation have decided to set aside certain places that represent those values. And so you can sort of make the argument that if you look at an aggregate of the national parks, they are a, a statement of what we as, as people believe are our core value. There's some easy ones there. There's patriotism, there's honor, there's sacrifice, ingenuity, freedom, equality, hard work. These kinds of things are, are sort of classic American values. I'm asserting strongly that the National Park Service has this sort of unique uh, responsibility to not only protect place, but the idea and ideal behind those places. And I don't know that there is any other institution that has that, that inherent responsibility. And that's, a, that's an enormous responsibility. And I believe that our second hundred years is all about utilizing those places and the stories behind them, including the pieces that are missing, which there are, there are certainly some, to help this country uh, to achieve its high ideals. So all of these are pieces, and the urban agenda is a very significant piece. This is, this is bringing the parks to the people. We've sort of had 100 years of hoping they would come visit if we built it really well, and they have. But now it is time really to, to rethink the role of the Park Service in the urban space. And then let me just take, give you, a, a, some of you heard the story, uh, the role we can play, and how, to a certain degree, I think the Park Service can be extraordinarily fearless, particularly in these urban spaces. I mean, the Ai Weiwei exhibit out there in Alcatraz right now, I'm talking about political prisoners, including Chelsea Manning and Ed Snowden, as right there within that art exhibit. And I think what we are on the verge of with this next 100 years, and you all are critical to that. All the partners in the room, all the pioneers, our great urban fellows, the superintendents of our urban parks, the heritage area program, the programmatic side of the National Park Service, RTCA, LWCF, um, all are about what this one National Park Service is all going to be about in the next century. And I think it's incredibly exciting. I mean, I think it's, we're already seeing this, these coalitions beginning to build and the the lectures we heard over the last couple of days about how powerful the, these places can be to change society and how important they can be to, uh, to our new population in the United States. And I'm a big sort of believer in how organizations change. We're not, you're not going to develop the model, you know, in Detroit and we're going to take it over to Seattle and implement it. It doesn't work that way. You know, Margaret Wheatley says, you know, people support that which they create. And so you're going to be helping people create, and that will inspire others to be creative. What we've done here at Golden Gate doesn't necessarily work in New York, but it inspires New York. It's about inspiration. It's about collaboration. It's about learning. And it's about really taking the National Park Service into this new role about serving American society to really achieve its highest ideals. So, thank you. Thanks.